James Perkins Jr., age 61, born and reared in Selma, Alabama, currently reside in Selma, Alabama. Shanette Carrington Thompson, born also in Selma, Alabama, age 61, and now I live in Alpharetta, Georgia. Rose Irby Wilkins, I was not born in Selma, Alabama. I moved to Selma, Alabama actually in 1965. I currently live in Smyrna, Georgia, and I will be 61 for one additional week. <laughs> I'm Joseph Smith. I appear to be the old man of the group. I'm 62 years old, and I reside in Lawrenceville, Georgia. However, I was born and raised in Selma, Alabama. We were all a part of the first class to graduate from Selma High in 1971. Um, leading up to that, we all we grew up in Selma. We, we attended school together. And so we have all of these things in common. Uh, and as a consequence, we have the marches uh, in March of 1965 in common. Personally, living on Lawrence Street, um, Brown's Chapel Church over in the GWC area on that day of the march. Uh, my parents really decided that we couldn't march that day because they felt it was too dangerous. It was rumored that there would be something going on. And so they held us out. But when we heard about uh, the tragedy that was taking place on the bridge, Dad took my mother to the hospital because she was an emergency room RN nurse. And when, she, when he did that, I ran from home to GWC. And when I arrived at GWC, uh, ran into troopers on horseback. And when we ran into the troopers on horseback, ran into someone's home and then ran into Brown's Chapel Church. We all have these kinds of stories to tell about the movement. And so here we are now reflecting on what really took place. What I remember about the March of 1965 I was 12 years old, and the mass meeting was taking place over at Brown Chapel A&M Church. And my parents had told me that I could not attend those meetings, and I decided to go with my friends. And we went to the church, and we found out that it was really a big meeting taking place with a lot of people in there. It was huge. I saw teachers that I had in fifth grade, sixth grade, third grade. I even had one to call me to come sit down beside her. We had a wonderful time. I felt good energy in that meeting and the people were singing songs that motivated me and when the meeting was over with I ran back home and I told my parents about them and they still would not let me attend the meeting or the march. The march took place on that Sunday and that's when I realized the impact of it because the people were turned around from the march. I lived in the projects, which is called GWC Homes, and I watched the people line up in twos to attend the march toward the bridge. But once they got there, they were turned around, and people were beaten, and they were running, and they were chased on horseback, and I ran home and stood in the door and watched. I watched people knocking on anybody's door to try to get someone to open and let them in. And once people got in, it kind of settled down, and that's how the march got the title, Bloody Sunday. Every time I talk about Bloody Sunday and the events that took place, uh, I get emotional uh, because I remember going into Brown's Chapel and smelling the tear gas, and I think we all know people who actually participated in the march. Uh, Dr. F.D. Reese, um, was a leader of the movement. He participated in a march. I remember my grandmother telling me about uh, she uh, marched from Selma to Montgomery, but my but my grandfather would not allow her to uh, to sleep uh, in the campsites. He would go pick her up every night and then take her back to complete the march. What I actually learned from the event was that persistence is important, and I also learned that. A common people work together to, to make this happen. Uh, leadership was important because Dr. King was there and he was a prolific leader and 
people listen to him. But I think the most important thing was I watched common people who had everyday jobs in factories and maid services and working in the hospitals, scrubbing floors. These were the people that stepped to the forefront. And these were the people that facilitated or made sure that this march happened and made sure that they followed Dr. Green, uh, Dr. King's dream. And I think that's what was important. I mean, just to watch everyday people that you knew participate. The Selma March created an air of apprehension in all of the black communities. Jimmy Lee Jackson had been killed in February during a protest in Marion, Alabama. Then a young white minister, James Reeb, was beat to death during a March 9th attempt to do the march. If you don't have a lot of time to shop for a gift for that special person in your life, we can help. Today, gift guru Sandra Magsalmon will show us a few creative gifts when time is of the essence. 